All right. We are gathered here today <laughs> to discuss this incredible new compilation that is coming out, Me Too, Minneapolis. And I am so honored to be joined by 12 of the 17 artists who participated in this compilation. I believe this is the biggest interview that I've ever done with the most amount of people at once. And I'm so excited to just get in the mix <laughs> and see how this all goes. So the first question I have for all of you is a bit of a lightning round question. I'm going to call on each of you and I would love it if you could just introduce yourself and have a one word description of how you feel about hashtag me to MPLS. Linnea, you want to go first? Hi, I'm Linnea. Um, I think my word is empowered. Elska. I'm Elska and I am grateful. Sarah. I'm Sarah and I am inspired. Tina. Uh, I'm Tina and I just feel in awe. Annie. Annie Fitzgerald, sorry. I'm Annie, and um, I'm inspired. Averill. I'm Averill, and I am ready. Katie. <laughs> I'm Katie, and um, I am supported. Maida. I'm Maida, and I'm lifted. Ro. Uh, my name is Ro. I use she, they pronouns, and uh, I would say introspective. Mary. Merry and kind of shadowy. <laughs> All right. Ashley. I'm Ashley and I'm not afraid. Annie Mack. <laughs> I'm Annie and I feel strong. I just love saying all of your names. <laughs> what an incredible group of people we have right now. So um, for the second question, it's a bit of a two-parter. I want to give you a little time to just say uh, a few reflective words on your participation in this project. So the two um, kind of main questions I'd love if you could each touch on is, why did you decide to contribute a track to Me Too Minneapolis? And what approach did you tr take with your song? And I'll just go in the same order so everyone kind of knows what to expect. Linnea, if you want to start us off. Uh, well, right around the time that um, Misha got in touch, um, Misha Sumig, uh, I, w I found out that I was pregnant and was having a daughter, and it felt extra important to be involved and be in the company of powerful women and femmes and just to sort of ground into that. And my approach was f like sort of marinating the concept for months and months and months, and uh, I was actually very sick for the first seven months of my pregnancy. And so right around month eight, we went into lockdown and then she was born in April. And um, so I really got to work, you know, in the postpartum period and kind of wrote from that place of feeling just exhausted, but also feeling like I just did something pretty badass. <laughs> and I am able to um, bring a new energy to this and like an urgency to this. So that was my approach. Can you talk more about the title of your song and what's it about? Oh, yeah. Um, a part, uh, I, I originally was thinking that it was going to be called Some Parts, and then I thought that I, I like couldn't get down with the pun of that, and I don't know. So I, a part is like being inclu inclusive, being included, but also the idea of kind of the separation that we're all enduring right now, and also kind of thinking of of our bodies as as needing to be part like all the different parts that I was healing at that point too where I was just like I need to just sort of like well and and when you're you've had a traumatic experience where you so you can sort of dissociate so it was kind of all of those ideas but the song itself is about uh just taking care of yourself and taking care of each other and the importance of community and the importance of doing the simple next thing to keep yourself healthy and whole so that you're strong enough to continue on and just and persist in what you're trying to accomplish because I mean the concept of you know don't quit rest so uh, that was kind of the foundation I think of, of that song um, and she does not sleep so I don't sleep either so <laughs> and there yeah thank you thanks Elska you want to go next yeah Back when the Me Too movement all got started, I was awestruck by how 
many people uh, were so ready to come out and maybe ready may not be the right word, but fed up enough to share their stories, whatever they may be. And so when this um, project came along, I, I was honored to be in this incredible group of people um, to share more stories. And my song is On the Shoulders of Giants. And what I wanted to have happen with this song was um, honor all of the people who have made themselves vulnerable and um, taken a risk t for the benefit, not only of freeing themselves, but um, for the community that is also stepping up and feeling empowered to share their stories because we've learned that it, it takes many voices to make these kinds of things happen. But I also wanted to take time to think about the generations of women and people who came before us who shared their stories and started knocking and chipping away at the system um, to allow this moment to be what it is. I mean, across the world, we've seen people coming up and sharing their stories and um, relentlessly fighting at this thing that's been at play for far too long. So I just, I felt compelled to honor. I mean, I think about my own mother and my grandmothers who did their part. And I just, I felt strongly that we, we show them the respect that they deserve for allowing us to take this moment. Thank you. Sarah Morris. Yes. I was super honored to be I was part of like such an amazing group of people as we talked about. I mean, I think that was, um, and the chance to support Planned Parenthood was a, a really um, easy sign up for me. Um, and I took a song that I had written a few summers ago and inspired or not inspired. <laughs> I mean, like inspired by the, um, our current president and how I feel like he sometimes has tantrums that remind me of when my son would have tantrums and like how crazy making that is and how the song is called Like It's Gospel. And so just the idea that like, I refuse to buy into this. I refuse to buy into this mindset. I refuse to buy into um, the awful things that he says and, um, and how, yeah. So that was where it came from. I rewrote the bridge to more reflect the Me Too um, movement and to kind of say how we are all a part of each other's stories as well. Thank you. I'll say the questions again, just in case, because it's been a little while since I've Thank said you. them. The two questions are, why did you decide to contribute a song to Me Too Minneapolis? And what approach did you take with your song? And Tina, you're up next. Uh, I, you know, echoing a lot of what um, most of the women here uh, have been saying. I mean, I, you know, an opportunity to write about this issue and to give, you know, with, with women and it being, you know, for women, by women and, and, and it just was very exciting for me. And also I found it very moving, but going, but approaching the song, I wasn't quite sure. I mean, the one thing that struck me ever since, the, you know, the whole hashtag me too movement has happened. It's, you know, it's amazing to me that I feel like as women, we've been, you know, going through our lives with, you don't realize how much um, people have been, um, you know, subjected or abused or, or, what have you, we just sort of go about, we, we go about our business and we go about our lives and we just, it, you know, and it happens every day in every different degree. I didn't personally have a story that is of, um, uh, you know, a real serious sexual assault, you know? Uh, so I felt I wasn't quite sure how to use my voice and to say something, to write something. So I was just, looking for different ways of inspiration and, and whatnot. And um, so I came across Jessica Mann's um, transcript of the letter she wrote to Harvey Weinstein during that trial. And I was so moved by her words to, um, you know, obviously there's nothing that's going to take away or make anything better or make, you know, but she was using her voice, her words as a certain of a strength to 
you know, this person that took her life basically away from her. And it, it, the words I found just so powerful and it was just in, incredible. So I just was using that. I, I was just trying to use that as a inspiration and as an angle for my song, which was called um, uh, What Would You Pay um, Dear Harvey? So it was sort of like a, a letter, you know, kind of like singing her letter to Harvey Weinstein that could be applied obviously to any abuser. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's where um, mine came from. Thank you. Annie Fitzgerald. Yeah. Um, I ended up getting um, an email through Krista Valenskis at Tinderbox, um, who's graciously taken on all the PR for this whole project from Misha, who I didn't know, um, Misha Sumning, who's kind of the curator of um, the project. And um, he had said in his email text that he has two young daughters and that he wants to teach them that they have sovereignty o over their own bodies and um, through this whole project. And I was kind of doing this whole, like, if it's, if it's not a hell yes, it's a no thing. And so it was a hell yes for me as soon as I heard that and then heard about all of you people who are incredible um, being a part of the project. So I think for me, the writing of the song was kind of daunting. Um, I've been very lucky in my life to not, um, like Tina had said, have experienced any sexual assault. Uh, being a woman in the industry, I've definitely had you know, close calls and, um, you know, very inappropriate things happen. Um, but that's never happened to me. Um, but I'm not a stranger to, um, emotional abuse and, um, some manipulation. So I sort of approached it from that perspective and I kind of, my song is called, I know that sound. And it's, uh, I kind of wrote it to myself sort of from like the outside in. Um, cause I think a lot of times when, you're experiencing um, any kind of abuse, it's hard to really um, see it for what it is. And so I wrote it to myself or, or sort of um, approached it like I was writing it to a friend. Um, the, the chorus is, I know that sound, it's eggshells cracking. Um, and just, you know, with, with the idea of um, kind of like the goal of being, you know, approaching it with empathy and with healing um, in mind. And um, I've said it before um, when we were talking to Ann Tracy with, um, mostly in Minnesota, I think that this whole project, it could be such an incredible catalyst for healing because all of us who've written every single song on this project have poured our hearts into it and have healed a part of ourselves and um, you know, hopefully others in turn by just sharing. Thank you. Averill. Yeah, so um, I had met Misha Sumnig years, years ago and um, hadn't heard from him in a while. And when he first uh, invited me, I asked myself, like what I would actually have to say or like where does my voice belong and I thought that that was just that frustrated me that I felt that way about myself like that I didn't think that I had a voice that was important enough to speak and I had been in a writer's block for several months and just was kind of feeling not as inspired so then I just kind of decided to dive into a pool of cement I was like I'm gonna just do this and it'll work out. And uh, so, yeah, I, um, my song is called Radiation Blues. It has a lot of references uh, to my um, outrage with the political uh, system and the way, the way that goes and has been going for a long time. And it was, you know, I, it, it took me some time to kind of figure out where I was going with, you know, what I, what I did want to say, but um, I had had a, a conversation with a completely random person on the street one day and it was very brief but it I had thought back to this and my overall questions that I have for people that are just so screwed up and <laughs> treating treating us all like we're not equal I just I don't understand how this important person in your life like what would that person say like what would your mother actually think of your actions or your lack thereof actions. And it just totally baffles me still. I'm always asking myself that question because, you know, our whole point, you know, one of our many points in life is to, to be the best people that we can be, you know? And so anyhow, that was just, um, I was taking a compilation of just a lot of frustration and it was just a lot of unorganized thoughts, which in the end I realized sort of made sense to me. 
I just have to say a little moment of reflection that one of the striking things about the Me Too movement to me is that it just spans so many different experiences from so many different people and different backgrounds. And that's something I really appreciate about this compilation as well. I, I think it's great that everyone finds their own way into it, you know, finds their own way into the conversation. So anyway, enough for me. <laughs> Katie Burden. <laughs> I think, um, you know, I've always just had this, um, you know, probably like many of you, just this desire to be heard. And then, of course, you have to dig deep and realize like, well, then I need to have something to say. You know, no one needs to listen to me if I don't even know what I want to say. So when I first got asked to be a part of this, um, Planned Parenthood is very near and dear to me. Um, I came to this country and had the rude awakening that, you know, there's no free healthcare um, in this country. So um, Planned Parenthood was my go-to for probably about three or four years for all of my healthcare. Um, and I've had very um, ongoing issues with my health. So um, it really literally was a lifesaver for me. So I would absolutely do anything to, to help them. And then you know, I thought at first I was very daunted about what to write about. You know, I have had some um, sexual abuse in the past, um, but it was a long time ago. And uh, I, kudos to anyone that digs deep into that. Um, I chose to go a different way and about being heard and having my voice add something to the conversation. I just thought, you know, for me, I feel, and, and I think I internalize some of it too, but I think that ageism is just as big an issue for me as sexism when it comes to how I feel I fit into the music scene. Um, I don't feel I fit into the music scene. I think that's what I've internalized. So I kind of came at it through the the other kinds of abuse that there are, which is, you know, if you're not part of the boys club, if you're not part of the network, if you didn't go to music school with everybody else, if you don't have that shared kind of connection, you just feel like an outsider. And I think that that's especially difficult for, um, for women in the scene. And so I kind of just thought, well, how do I feel about how I have put myself into the music scene and kind of, you know, tried to, tried to even like have a career, not that there's much of a career in music at the moment, but, um, so I called the song Shine and kind of the intro of the song is basically about like scrambling, trying to be heard, trying to break down walls, um, within you as well as within the music scene. And then if you do get that attention and I've been I feel very, very privileged and lucky that my music has been played on the radio um, in town and I've had the opportunity to play some really cool shows. And so then you want to bring other people with you. And I kind of thought, I don't know if people have seen that gift of the women pulling each other up there's this little if you're having a bad day on twitter people will sometimes share like this little image of cartoon ladies like reaching each other's hands and pulling each other up and i just love that and i visually wanted the chorus to be the epitome of that that we can if you're lucky enough and i do feel lucky um i'm a miserable old bugger as well but i do have my moments of huge gratitude and if I can ever shine that light and put someone on a bill or plan a festival with someone, or, you know, discover someone who's strumming away on the ukulele in their basement and put them on a big stage, then that's what I want to do. And I, I feel like I have a little bit of uh, an opportunity to do that. And I wanted to get that across in the song and have it be really uplifting. Um, I love that the, the CD is so varied and it's so moving. Um, and I guess I just wanted to have something kind of shiny and happy on there as well. So hopefully people get that from the song. Mary Bue. Yes, yeah, so I, well, I've written about this topic before. <laughs> um, I wrote a song called Petty Misdemeanor in, and it came out on an EP in 2017. And that was like literally about uh, my sexual assault experience that happened 10 years before. And um, so when Misha reached out, he, yeah, I was, I'm, I'm willing to, to speak about it. I, I felt, um, I felt like this volcanic, like I need to speak about this finally because I really kept it uh, really quiet for 10 years. 
And um, so when he asked, I was like, of course. And then as it approached that I had to actually write the song, it just became more and more, uh, <laughs> more and more challenging to to go there again um, and dig in again because I knew that I would write about it again. So I did, and my song is called How to Forgive Your Rapist. And it's very much not about how to forgive your rapist. Um, the, the twist is um, trying to forgive yourself. It's really about like the victim blaming and shaming. And um, that happens uh, that, you know, well, you were drinking, well, you were dancing in the club, you were being nice to a man, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it must have been your fault. And that, that happens. Um, that happens. So um, I feel that, and I've felt and noticed and witnessed that like an individual healing is, has deep rippling healing effects to the collective. And what, when I said shadowy before, it just feels like, um, you know, all these like gross ghosts and corpses are like falling out of all the closets right now and um and we're we're shining shining light on on all of this disgusting behavior and it's um really painful to dig in but ultimately super worthy so i'm really humbled and and grateful to be part of this group and i feel really supported that i could you know, call any of you and you'd have my back and I have your back. So thanks. <laughs> Ro, do you want to go next? Sure, I can go next. So I was originally approached by um, Krista for like writing with Static Panic um, to make this, uh, make part of this compilation happen. And I, the more that I started to write and work on it and like, trying to figure out like what a song about hashtag me to from a funk party band would sound like it felt like it was just going to be really difficult um to accomplish and like everything that i was coming up with just like didn't quite meet the mark for me and i needed to kind of reevaluate um my ability to share maybe some some sides of my creativity that i haven't had on like a public platform before um, and really taking into account uh, my own experiences, both personal and professional. Um, there have been moments where I personally felt like I was made to feel in those moments not woman enough to deserve to feel like I was right in feeling like I had been assaulted or like I had felt the feelings that I was feeling and deserved to feel those feelings that I was feeling. And so the song Sides to Lonely, it kind of encompasses this feeling of, of not feeling like you're enough in, in, in many different ways, but I'm hoping that, that someone will take into, I mean, it, it really speaks to an experience of kind of persevering through dissociation that can happen when, when you're, you know, in your own thoughts and someone just tells you, why don't you just, you know, get over it or be happy or, or you know, like, take the high road and there's better things on the other side and, and, and wondering, you know, a lot of those things, like, is there, a, you know, a better side? Is there, is there another side? Is there, you know, like more hardship on the other side? Um, and kind of the ways that, that internalizing those things can, can kind of burn you um, from the inside. Um, if you really, if you, if you, you know, don't take the time that you need as, as an individual to heal, to, to feel what you need to feel in order to be able to come, come above it and, and, you know, work to, to see something beyond what you're feeling right now. Beautiful. Thank you. Annie Mack. I feel very honored to be with so many um, amazing artists and um, women to, to help get voice to this. And I'll keep it short and sweet. But I just was really lucky enough to write a song with Sarah Morris, and I wanted to tell the story of uh, my song's called Judge and Jury. And it's basically like an F you, like, you know, you're not the judge and jury of me. And also to address the religious stigma or uh, judgment that comes from, you know, that there's stipulations in order to receive help or receive compassion or receive understanding. 
um, kind of what Mary was touching on, you know, about like whose fault and, and if you hadn't have done this and, you know, just the communities that neglect, you know, when women, when we talk about needing help and we give voice to the things that have transpired and we need healing and we need support. And so I kind of wrote from that perspective of addressing the, um, the judgment that comes and, you know, versus just helping and, and being an advocate. And like I said, Sarah Morris was kind enough to help me uh, write that song. And, um, you know, that's that. So, and I'm in my pajamas. Sorry about that. <laughs> How many of us are wearing actual pants? Let's be honest. <laughs> We're living through strange times. Ashley. <laughs> Thank you. So I, I think I was the last one to be part of it. I was not asked to be a part, but I met Krista earlier this summer. I had reached out to her for help promoting the single, I'm Not Effing Around, we were going to put it out on the 4th of July. And she asked if we could hold off and if I would be a part of this. And I was so excited and so honored. Sexual abuse and assault and rape has been part of my history. And I'm a huge supporter of Planned Parenthood. And I'm so honored to be a part. So I said, absolutely. The song um, I've spent most of my life stepping aside, apologizing, bowing down, bowing out, shutting up, keeping my mouth shut, deferring to the man in the room, abiding by BS rules that certainly don't serve me and really don't serve anyone. And the song is just about waking up and saying, enough, I'm not effing around anymore. And I think the second verse is about relationships because I found myself in a couple of really abusive relationships, the second one worse than the first. And um, yeah, so whatever, that's what that's all about. I'm just really happy and so honored that I just happened upon this project. And yeah, I'm really grateful. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing. Okay. Well, I want to try to open it up for a larger, more open conversation. Um, so I wanted to ask about a, a broader topic, but I thought, you know, let's stay on the compilation for a moment because so many interesting thoughts just arose as we went around and heard about, you know, the decision to participate. I wonder if you have any thoughts about what you would like to see as an impact of this compilation coming out, especially at this moment in this year. Like, what are your hopes as it makes its way out into the world? I really hope that it just keeps the conversation going. And I hope that I know that I personally have some amazing, amazing male friends who are very sympathetic and, and, and want to be educated and want to listen and they want to know. And I hope going forward as we keep these conversations going is that there's more of a platform for them to feel brave enough to stand amongst people that have been abused. And I feel like, I don't feel like there's enough. I mean, I think, you know, being a gay woman, I know the one thing that changed, you know, being more acceptable for homosexuality, being queer is allies, is straight people standing up and going, no, enough. Because we can only scream so much. And I feel like there, it would be great to see this compilation encourage more allies to the whole project, because I think that that's when change is going to um, happen. Education will happen. Yeah. Annie Fitzgerald. Is it okay? Is it, yeah, yeah. I just, just to kind of go off of what Tina just said too, I think that community is such an important aspect of all of this and, and like the, in, in the creating of allies. And um, I think that the fact that we're all coming together in community and showing up in that way um, might be inspiring for other people to feel more comfortable coming forth, especially, you know, in our community, um, which I know is, has been a thing um, that has been happening more and more um, in the past few years. So I think that's an important piece. Ro, do you want to chime in next? I was just going to add that um, I hope that it inspires someone who maybe felt 
encouraged or inspired by you know recent actions and recent movements and in, in our music scene to um you know form alliances of accountability and just strengthen numbers to be able to overcome human challenges very human challenges um that are you know both inter internal and external i think that I ho well, I hope that this this project really allows for maybe someone who still hasn't had the opportunity to come forward if they feel they need to come forward or that um, this might help them um, help someone else to heal or, or bring light into their lives a little bit more, just knowing that they're less alone, even more so now than ever before. Annie, you have something you want to add? Um, I'm just going to throw this out there. I'm really hoping that the irony here is amazing to me, and I don't know, I think this is the correct word, but that the music industry is dominated by men, and it is, you know, um, the opportunities go to men, and there seems to be a lot of power. However, when it comes to the accountability that's taking place within the industry and the community, there is such a great uh, lacking. And so my hope is that, you know, these men, will step up and take accountability and hold others accountable. I think there's power, you know, in the ally, and I think there's power in, but I also think there's power in your peer calling you out and addressing this, especially when these are people that you work with closely, whatever business it is. I, I find it, I'm, I'm very glad that you took it upon yourself to be proactive and to do what's necessary for now but quite honestly i think that there needs to be more from um you know the individuals and from the men that are also a, a part of this and so i want to commend you but i also want to say i'd like to see more so at this point you know i'm excited that this is causing this is the fire this is the refining this is how it gets done this is how it is you know you put it out there and then you don't back down and so i'm very excited it's it's incredibly scary um for a lot it's triggering there's a lot to go on but this is how we change things and this is how the movement this is how it, and everyone does their part you know everyone has a calling to do their part and i'm very grateful that this platform but you know thank you you know thank you like for being here but this wasn't you know you chose to be here and i'm looking for the people to also choose to be here as well so hopefully this will be a start for some accountability and taking responsibility for the bullshit. And I said that in my pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> Other thoughts to share about this topic, the impact of the compilation as it comes out, your hopes for it. I saw Linnea's hand go up. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of echoing what you said, Annie, about, showing up and, and the accountability aspect of it, because there, there is always the risk of as powerful as the initial um, emergence of, of the Me Too movement was, that there's always that risk of like things, you know, it kind of cresting and then, and then people, you know, kind of backing off from it or just that there's this, this feels like something um, participatory in a way where it's like, no, there's more to this. Like, let's keep pushing, let's keep showing up. And I, and just from my own sense of accountability, like there were several times throughout the last year where I'm like, I'm just gonna, you know, I don't, I agree to this, but I'm just, you know, I'm just not going to do, I'm, I think this is too hard. I'm going to, you know, and then like, I just couldn't not stay invested and stay connected to it. It, it felt really important. Uh, and so I'm just really grateful to it. Like, I felt like I would have let everyone else down to actually back off and quit. And so um, that's part of it too, where it feels like if, if anything else, because there are so many of us involved, that it's just like, oh, you, oh, you, this is important to you? Like, oh, okay, this is, you know, or just it's, if somebody's feeling hesitant about um, getting involved in the conversation that they don't feel isolated or maybe there'll be that little extra push, so. Elska. I, I just um, so honor the, the community parts that people were bringing up and there's so much of um grappling with our own me too experiences that feels so isolating and so incredibly lonely um but the beauty of like all of these faces on this screen and voices on this call 
and the greater community in this conversation is it reminded me of something that my grandmother used to say to my mother and my mother would say to my siblings and me is you don't have to hurt alone there's there's still so much grief that and processing that has to happen internally and only you can do it but but the hurting you can have people around you and so i just something that i hope to see come out of this is just the the holding of each other and not allowing us to be alone in in the pain at all well said katie yeah, I um, I think, you know, just believe women. Like, that's the biggest thing I want people to get from this project is why are we still having this conversation? Why do people think – we need to have it, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but um, why do people think that women are making it up? Why do they think that we have some kind of agenda? Um, like I said, I had a few stories. Um, they were painful and they were a long time ago and I didn't want to dig those up. Um, so I came at it from a different angle. There's a lot of ways that women's voices can be um, silenced. And so I just hope that people listen. Um, like everybody has said, you know, there's, there's um, a lot of different ways to come at this. And um, I think there's strength in numbers. I think that, um, you know, people hopefully will listen to the CD and realize that being a woman is not a genre in music, that it is just, <laughs> we're just musicians and we all have very varied things to say. And um, yeah, I guess just, um, there needs to be really a reckoning. And um, every time it seems to get going, you know, it, it can run out of steam. So I'm just happy to throw a log on fire and just try to keep it going. I feel like that just kind of dovetails into the larger question that I wanted to ask too, which is, you know, the music industry is in such a state of shock in so many ways. There's no concerts for the most part. There's been this huge reckoning with real, no real resolution um, throughout the whole summer here in the Twin Cities. And at some point, things are going to start to open up and we're going to start to move forward again. What do you want to see handled differently as we move forward into this new, whatever the next phase of our shared reality is going to be? Annie Fitzgerald, I saw you unmute yourself. Did you yeah, want to I, say I think, um, I think that in... Um at some point in, in time during the mostly Minnesota interview, somebody brought up the fact that um, within our industry, you know, there's no HR that just doesn't, doesn't exist. And I think that it would be lovely to start um, having broader conversations with the venues and um, you know, all the different facets of our industry around best practices and what people should expect and what artists should expect and have some sort of code of ethics that that transpires um, around all of the things that have been happening. I think that that would be a lovely um, and important you know, thing to, to come out of all of this. Sarah, do you want to add something? Yeah, I think piggybacking off of that, I feel like just adding transparency to so many like areas of the way we do business there's we are these little pockets all the time like operating under well i think this is how other people are doing it maybe they're doing it that way or like maybe some, i am i doing this you know like it's so often um just kind of hidden either overtly or like on purpose or just kind of gauzy shadowy um so i think having greater transparency and a better vocabulary that we like can share on how to address things right up front or when things do come to light. I think that's a, a going forward. Jordan Myers has entered the chat. <laughs> Hi, Jordan. Um, we went around and asked a couple rounds of questions. So I would love to bring you in and um, I, I would love to just have you, we just kind of wrapped up the round of questions about talking about why you wanted to participate in this project and um, more about your specific song. So um, if you'd like to hop in with that, um, if you want to just introduce yourself, um, I, you sure. probably know everybody here, but um, that would be a great place to start. Yeah, um, actually, I don't know everybody. I'm Jordan. Um, I perform under the stage name, sure. And um, sorry, I'm late. I, had, I was at work, but um, here I am. So I uh, joined the project because I was invited by Krista and Misha. I didn't know Misha, but Krista 
was like really excited about it and I trust Krista with everything. So um, I joined uh, because of that and also was excited about the challenge of writing music about a really like obviously like sensitive and personal topic and, and wanted to find a way to communicate. I think things that I felt like I needed to say and I wondered a lot about what my voice was in this particular um, instance for me what my song is about called won't stop me and the chorus is basically like about feeling like i've been silenced by like oppressive ideologies and patterns in our society and um really trying to i guess come out of that and feel empowered to seek what my boundaries really are and where i begin and others end and where I want to draw lines for the people who I encounter. And so some of it is like pseudo political. Some of it is about like my own physical body um, and where I want people to respect me. Uh, But ultimately I think that what I wanted to say was that I wouldn't be quiet about it anymore. And that I was tired of pleasing people and accommodating other people just so that they feel comfortable. You know, it's not okay with me if I perform for people and, just because they think they know me because I played a song or a show for them, which that's great that they connected, but like that doesn't mean you get to put your hand on my back or hug me for a photo or touch my body because I played a song for you. Like that like is a small, like a small thing. I've been certainly um, experienced more egregious encounters than that, but just as like a first stepping stone of saying like, hey, actually I was like consent all the way down to like how you take pictures with me and how we move from there is something I want to communicate about. And I think besides that, I also feel strongly that, that I just don't want to stop saying how I feel and what I think about things. And I'm tired of people telling me that I'm wrong about my feelings. And I'm tired of people saying that they're not important enough. And um, ultimately I just wanted to create music that um, empowered women and empowered my, made me feel empowered to, to say what I really needed to say. Because I think for a long time I grappled with that um, in my own experiences with assaults or, you know, other types of like patriarchal bullshit that I, that, that I end up feeling like I'm trying to make everybody happy. And I'm just like, so I'm over it. And that's kind of what, that's what it ends up being about. That's what the song ended up being about. You're not alone. That sounds very <laughs> familiar with a lot that's been expressed so far tonight. We had just started talking about more generally what you would like to see done differently in the music community and in the music scene as everything is in shock. Um, We are on pause from having a lot of live events. We're going through a series of reckonings that are very unresolved and we need to figure out how we're going to move forward. So we're just starting to kind of dip our toes into that conversation and, and bring up whatever people would like to add to that. Um, we've heard from a couple people so far. Would anyone else like to jump off of that right now? I was just, you know, just sort of piggybacking on all of that. Every what everybody's saying, it would be, it would be nice to 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 have more of a safe place for women or people that are more vulnerable in clubs, in in bars, and who, who knows, like if that's will slowly happen um and and i guess i'm just saying same thing like believing like feeling more people would believe any woman that comes forward with you know some guy you know who's a manager at some bar or booking this or doing that like said something or did something to me and that it gets changed you know like what annie mack was saying about holding people accountable instead of like other people saying like well but do we really want to ruin his life and his career and everything he's done for our community do we really want to ruin it just because some woman or a couple women or people have said he's done this or did that and and that that is where i would love for that to stop and for people to feel like you know so many of all of us if you've heard almost everyone on this zoom meeting have said the same thing which is i just wasn't sure my voice was important enough to be heard and that that's got to friggin change and and it is changing now and because we obviously look at all of us we do have something to say and it is of value and it is of importance and i think that that's what's so exciting about this project i think it's going to make other women feel validated and important and heard 
yeah so anyway i i it would yeah so that's me i guess <laughs> I'll, i'll mute again <laughs> that was amazing jordan do you want to add to that sure i think um what has been really amazing to me is like when i decided to join this project i just kind of was like yeah i'm gonna put a song on a cd and someone's gonna buy it and raise money for my parents like i felt very disconnected from kind of the whole thing initially it felt like we were all i didn't even know really who else was doing it like it's I don't know. I had no idea that I was saying yes to like an amazing like community of women, um, femme, non-binary, trans, like group of people who want to see a community come together to make a safe space for everyone. And all of a sudden, I feel so excited. And for the first time, I actually believe it can happen. I actually have always been like, yeah, it'd be great to feel safe as a woman in music, but like <laughs> when pigs fly, right? <laughs> I don't know. It just felt like that was not a thing that was going to happen in my lifetime and in my career. But right now in our community, specifically in Minneapolis, St. Paul area, I see it being possible that for whatever reason, because this world is shut down, that we have a chance here like we've never had before to rebuild something new. That's amazing. And it is what we want it to be. Like we've had this crazy reset and I think there's opportunity at venues at Well, primarily I've been used, but um, in these different hotspots for musicians to to build places that are safe, like physically safe for women and also a community of people who believe each other, who stand with each other, who are ready to put together bills that are safe for women and bills that are not going to be full of jerks <laughs> and um, that, I don't know, I just, I see this being a moment where like our society has sort of deconstructed and that gives us and now we're together here on the ground level like with an opportunity to build something amazing um and build what we want it to be and and here we are all of a sudden with this network of amazing people that we just sort of stumbled upon by being a part of this project i had no idea that i would end up being a part of this group and see so many wonderful people speaking out and ready to stand and have each other's backs like this feels to me very empowering and like a very special moment so I know my ideas are a little more grandiose and like big but I see so much potential and what is what's possible right now more than than any other time yeah Katie yeah I'm so encouraged by younger artists well all of us I hate to say I'm not encouraged by old folks I, I feel um, I'm just coming from this kind of as a maternal um, point of view that, um, you know, I'm a mother of two teenage girls. One just went off to art college and all of this craziness. She's just on Zoom six hours a day, but she's not in my house. So she's excited about that. And I do feel in a, in a bigger sense encouraged by um, just the increasing amount of voices that are saying that, you know, what was normal, what was the patriarchy is not okay. And, um, and I think, you know, I especially see that in younger artists and, um, and in my own kids that, um, you know, for all of us just to keep on saying, um, believe women, this is not okay. Smash the patriarchy, fire people if they've had multiple complaints made against them. Um, you know, if we just all keep at it, then even my most cynical, sad self, who's been, you know, kind of clawing away in this industry for 20 years, that encourages me. So I'm very excited by all of the artists on this CD and especially, um, you know, this, this group of women coming up um, through things like the Girls Rock and Roll Retreat, you know, just they're so fierce and it's really encouraging and a better scene can be built by everybody. So that excites me. Anyone else want to chime in? You are all so amazing. <laughs> Since you've all been so wonderful and honest, I have to just share, I was so nervous. I mean, I've gone through like every emotion in the last 48 hours and I was really nervous about this. And then, I don't know, today evolved in so many different directions. But at the end of it, I just realized like, I'm not about to let another disappointing man <laughs> get in the way of incredible women and non-binary artists being able to share their music and their stories. And I have so much respect for all of you, which I said at the top of this as well. And you've just filled me with so much hope tonight. <laughs> and uh, I really appreciate that. So thank you so much for being here and being part of this and being part of this compilation. 
thank you for having me be your MC at this event. I am so honored. I'm going to try to get out of my office where I've been stowed away for six months and make my videos somewhere else. So we'll see. <laughs> Andrea on the loose. Um, I'll try to make it fun. Um, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, if everyone could just unmute and we could pretend like we're in a room together for a second as we all um, close down. Yeah. <laughs> It's just wonderful seeing all of you. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you. All right. Well, have a good night. Thank you for giving me so much of your night. I hope you can all get some rest because there's more to do tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. See you all thank soon. You. And thank all of you, all of you wonderful women out there. And uh, thank you. You guys are amazing. The songs are amazing. So anyway. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Hope Bye. to hug all of you sometime soon. Yes. <laughs>